Hey friends, welcome back. This lesson is titled, What comes and goes has no being. Let it come and go. This plays into the idea of emptiness a little bit. It plays into the idea that the things that appear to us, the experiences that appear to us, the objects that appear to us, the people that appear to us, the circumstances that appear to us, the physicality that seems to appear to us. Every single one of these experiences or objects or things has no being of its own, in other words, meaning that beingness itself is only awareness, is only the perceiver, is only you as consciousness, as I am, as beingness. You are the only thing in that sense that has beingness, that has presence, that has existence or beingness. So the things that come and go cannot by definition have beingness because they come and go. They come and go as appearances appearing to or inside of your consciousness, your awareness. That awareness itself is existence itself. It is beingness. It has beingness. Awareness is, therefore it has beingness. Now, objects seem to be, but essentially speaking, they don't have beingness of their own. So in a sense, they do have beingness. And we explored this in one of the first lessons of Enlightenment One, uh, lesson three, which is everything has presence. Everything has beingness, in other words. So we've explored the fact, the experiential fact that objects actually do have beingness. They do have presence. However, they don't have beingness of their own. This is a crucial distinction to make. In other words, the objects that you experience on a day to day basis do not exist apart from your beingness. So in lesson three, everything has presence. The presence that you sensed in the objects was actually simply an extension of your very own beingness. You gave life to the appearances you made it seem like there was an actual object appearing. In fact, in reality, in actuality, all that's occurring is that out of your consciousness, out of your awareness, out of your beingness, you generate the illusory perceptions that you generate on a day-to-day -day basis, on a constant basis, on a nanosecond to nanosecond basis. And those perceptions consist of colors and sensations and and ideas and images and words. And when we combine all these different elements, it make it seem, and we'll address this a little bit in a later lesson in course three of Enlightenment one. So Enlightenment three, we'll go into dismantling the idea of perception. But for now, just notice that all these different elements like sight and sound and uh, visual and um, uh, tactile, like feeling, the sense of it, the words we give to things, the definitions, the thoughts, everything that we apply to our perception make objects seem like they have an independent existence. So another way of titling this lesson could be things don't have independent existence. They or they don't exist independent of you, independent from you, from you as consciousness. Nothing exists apart from awareness. And we'll get into this a little more deeper uh, in the inseparability course. Again, that's enlightenment three. For now, the purpose of this lesson is to specifically realize that you can give yourself permission to feel free, to let things come and go, to let things be as they are. Why or how? By knowing that the things that appear don't actually have a beingness of their own. They don't have a beingness independent from you. They literally don't exist without you. They literally don't exist apart from you. They literally are given life, are given appearance. They are given existence. They are given presence. They are given beingness. 
by your beingness, by your I am power, by your consciousness generating these perceptions, these illusions, these appearances, these experiences. And it, it uses its own I am presence energy to generate that imagery, to generate those perceptions. Its infinite field of I am presence, love, light, energy is utilized to generate all images, all perceptions that we know that we can possibly create. So everything we encounter in everyday life is generated out of our own beingness. By definition, by fact, you as a consciousness, you as an individuated consciousness, you as your consciousness cannot experience something that is not generated out of your very own I am, I exist, love, light, presence, energy. By definition, it is impossible for a consciousness to experience anything but itself. It's therefore not a witness that goes and visits certain places or things that actually exist independent from the witness, independent from consciousness. No, consciousness always, timelessly so, before the beginning of creation in that sense, this is a permanent, eternal, timeless fact, has generated the illusion of separation and experience and things and objects out of his own energy field within and inside of its own perceptive field, its field of awareness, which is not even really a field, ultimately speaking, it's simply consciousness. But that gets a little too subtle to get into right now. Awareness can be visualized as a field, even though that's not accurate. But therefore, within that field of awareness, everything is projected, everything is generated out of that field. And so things start to appear as if they exist separate from consciousness, but they don't. And so we can say accurately so that things don't have independent existence, or in other words, nothing has beingness. Things that come and go don't have beingness. You have beingness. So that's the only thing that's real, ultimately speaking. So everything that appears to you is simply created out of your presence in that very moment. And the moment you stop generating that appearance, it seems to go. The moment you start generating an appearance, it seems to come into your experience. So it's not that you come and go to certain places and things and events. Consciousness, awareness is ab absolutely motionless. It's absolutely still. It's absolutely without space, time, dimension. Therefore, it can't move. Movement is an irrelevant idea when it comes to awareness. So awareness could be visualized as a stationary intelligence or cognizance that is able to, within itself, generate the illusion of space and time and experiences and things and separation and individuation and isolation and objects and all that and movement and motion. But that all comes and goes inside of the self-generated imagery that awareness generates out of its own presence energy field or love light energy. So you see that makes it so much easier to let things come and go. Because now you realize that the things you generated, they did not come from outside of your experience and then entered your experience. You simply shifted your awareness to a particular vibratory configuration where you then generated or activated out of the potential infinite field of awareness, a you highlighted a particular potential reality that now became manifest to you from your particular individuated I am awareness or consciousness. So you quite literally generate your reality in that sense all the time automatically. That is the power that you have. That is the power that you are. That is the power of awareness. Awareness in that sense is the shaper. It is in that sense the creator of reality. So when you start noticing that you actually generate the things that come and you stop generating certain things at certain points, which then seem to go. But it's simply that you stop activating these potential realities into manifest realities. And so they go back into being what they always already were, potential realities of energy, not actual objects that exist independent from awareness or apart from consciousness. There's no such thing as a reality apart from consciousness. It has never been found. It will never be, be found because it's not possible. At some point, this becomes absolutely logical to you and there's no way around it. For now, it may still sound like it's something you have to believe in. That's okay. 
with more and more practice in the resting as awareness and seeing appearances as illusory self-projections of awareness within its own spaciousness. You start to really, really understand and experientially experience beyond the shadow of a doubt the idea of inseparability and the idea that things don't have independent beingness. And so things can come and go, but you can see now that it's you generating the coming of them, the staying of them, and you stop generating them at some point, which we call, oh, this has left my reality. But it's simply that you ceased to generate that particular vibratory state of being that then generated that particular physical experience. So physicality exists inside of you. It exists not apart from consciousness. It doesn't have its own beingness. Every appearance derives its beingness from your I am beingness. You are literally breathing beingness, breathing life into the perceptions of your everyday experience by generating that out of your own I am presence, infinite endless energy. So the practical bottom line or the relief on your end by starting to know this, by starting to notice this experientially and by starting to fully know and embrace this concept, this understanding, this principle, that things don't have beingness apart from you, but that you, with your presence, give things their presence, and that things don't have presence of their own. You give them life, you manifest them, you create them right there, you generate these images using your awareness automatically, intelligently so. So as soon as you realize this more fully, the permission slip for you then is to feel absolutely free to let things come and go. Suddenly it becomes much easier to let things be because you see that, hey, wait a second, this already existed timelessly, eternally, inside of the field of infinite potential energy. I simply cho chose to highlight it by being of a certain vibratory pattern within my consciousness, within my I am state of being, that then out of the field of infinite potential realities, highlighted or made manifest in our physical terms, a particular configuration of energy that I then call, oh, my reality. But I am generating that. My I amness, my, my beingness is giving beingness to the appearances, is generating the appearances that then seem to exist in and of themselves, but they are completely inseparable. They completely derive their existence from my existence, from my beingness. Without my existence, the things that I experience don't exist. While they do on a non-experiential, um, potential level, which is still inside of consciousness, inside of the potential of consciousness. Even when you cease to create certain experiences, they still don't have beingness of their own in the field of potential, because even the field of infinite potential is still consciousness itself. So things actually don't exist in that sense. They are generated out of the one beingness that we all share in and as, and our expressions of. So again, the permission slip then becomes that you can relax even more, even more profoundly. You can give up the idea that you need to control how things appear, how they come and go, because now you can get to enjoy the flow of life, the flow of appearances coming and going as it's generated like a sculpture, like an ever changing malleable sculpture of spacious energy moving in and out of your consciousness, morphing, changing, transforming. Every moment is new and different. Every moment something comes and something else goes. And it's not a problem because none of it has its own being as anyway. You're just your own sculptor. You're playing with your own sand. You're playing with your own clay. You're playing with your own energy field. You're playing with your own potential energy. Isn't that beautiful? Consciousness is always playing with its own energy field. It's only ever experiencing its own beingness, but it's shaping that in a certain form so that it looks real, so that it looks like it's there. But it's only there because we give it beingness. So again, knowing this allows us to let go of certain things much easier than we would if we thought that it had actual existence apart from consciousness. As soon as something moves out of our consciousness, it still exists. We can always tap back into that reality. And if we do that sufficiently enough with enough, shall I say, emotion or desire or intention, and it is relevant for us to experience that particular appearance or configuration of universal energy once more, then we will. In other words, anything that goes is never fully gone. It's always still within your consciousness. It's simply not relevant for you to generate imagery of that nature at this particular time. But that's okay, because there's so much else to explore. 
So why not let go of the things that previously seemed real, that you now feel in your heart to be manifestations of your own beingness. And therefore, since your beingness is always with you, it simply sh changes in the shape within which or through which it expresses and manifests itself. You can hold on to the beingness and let go of the way in which it projects its essence energy. You can let it go. You can let it come. You can let it go. Oh, there's another appearance. I may like it or I may not like it, but I can at least, the first thing I do, I can relax for two to five seconds back into the knowingness that I am generating this out of my energy, out of my consciousness energy. And it's just consciousness morphing itself in a certain experiential perception shape of itself so that it can experience its potential in a certain way. It's beautiful. And then it will let go of that particular perception and generate another version of itself, another form of experiencing its own perceptive self, its own intelligence, its own potential. And so you allow things to come and go, 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 because that's what happens all the time. And you realize that the things that come and go never had beingness of their own. It was only ever your own beingness that you experienced in a particular shape. Knowing this, you can maintain or hold on to, or not so much hold on to, but you know, you can rest in or anchor in or know that you are, know that you can derive your well-being from the stability, the changelessness of the beingness of you itself knowing that there is no other beingness to gain or get because there is no beingness in the things that you generate. They are all your own beingness. There is no additional beingness. There's only pure beingness, which is you it just so happens to be you. So rest in the beingness while things come and go and change. It's amazingly liberating as you already know by now to an extent. It's a great relief to give yourself this permission. It's amazingly clarifying to see that you give life to appearances, therefore they seem real, but it's only your own presence that you're tasting out there. It's actually still your own consciousness generated seemingly out there, but it's still within your consciousness. So the homework for this lesson is to do a little meditation to a little 10 to 20 minute meditation, at least two times before you move on to the next lesson where you Either play this recording again, although I want you to do that anyhow, apart from the meditation. I want you to listen to this recording at least two more times before your next lesson and let it operate as a guided meditation. But in addition to listening to this lesson at least two more times before you open your next lesson, also do two meditations. This is the same meditation twice, but uh, do it twice, where you sit down for 10 to 20 minutes or however long feels good to you and genuine and authentic and you quite literally apply the words that I used in this recording. In other words, you start to notice how the things that seem to have presence over there only have presence because you as a consciousness presence are observing them. You as an awareness presence energy, you as beingness are noticing more of your own beingness in form. And so when the form changes or disappears from view or you turn the other way and you start experiencing other things or you enter a different room and you start to experience a different reality. Notice that the things that moved away actually ceased to be made manifest. Okay. So your beingness is what you will always experience and taste. It's what you carry with you wherever you go, because really wherever you go, a more accurate way to put that is whatever you let move throughout and inside of your consciousness. The consciousness is the stable, changeless vector. Start noticing that awareness is the changelessness, the beingness itself, which gives rise to beingness in different types of perceptive perceptions, perceptions and forms. So simply notice this, notice that things have beingness, but only because you have beingness. And the only thing you ever truly experience is your own presence, energy, and your own clear cognizant awareness your own spaciousness, your own emptiness, your own freedom, your own energy, your own presence, your own beingness. You are the only beingness you'll ever experience. Notice this for about 10 to 20 minutes or longer if you feel like it at least two more times, but you can do this more often until the next lesson before you start the next lesson. And I want you to, in addition, so the third point of this homework is to write down in a couple paragraphs or so, things that stood out to you in this meditation, new realizations, new angles on awareness or existence that you've never had before, new permission slips to relax that you discovered 
anything that stood out to you in this meditation as a new realization, write this down. And again, I'd be delighted if you would share this in the study group so that all of us may share in your revelations and may support you and may learn from you. Thank you so much. And I'll see you at the next lesson. Thank <laughs> you.